The Movie Geeks United Art of the Documentary series premieres in January 2016. In this special preview clip from one of the all-new interviews from that series, director Liz Garbus discusses her approaches to portraying the lives of both chess legend Bobby Fischer and music superstar Nina Simone. For more information on the art of the documentary series, visit moviegeeksunited.net. Well, this is something that, I mean, it's a question, and, and, and mental illness kind of runs through a few of your films as well. Uh, I mean, most prominently in something like Bobby Fischer. And mm-hmm. I guess the main, the main, one of the main questions that comes to mind with, with Bobby Fischer and Against the World, I mean, is the line between uh, genius and, you know, for lack of a better term, madness, which is something that we even see in narrative films like uh, something like Amadeus or something. Uh, mm-hmm. But w- w- is, is that a point of interest for you uh, to explore? Oh, yeah, certainly. I think, you know, those of us, those people who fall outside the box um, – uh, of behaviors and, you know, who are extremely sensitive and um, uh, often are, uh, you know, sometimes judged as, you know, using unfair terms like crazy, et cetera. But I also think, you know, the idea of the child prodigy, which both, you know, Nina and Bobby Fischer were, you kind of, you grow up in this isolated you know, box, and I think it's very difficult. You know, people don't socialize with you normally, and you don't socialize with them normally, and you're working all of this amount of time. So I think that's something that, you know, runs through both of them is that their childhoods are really rarefied as that child prodigy. And certainly I think that, you know, certainly people can survive that, but it's tough. Yeah, yeah. And also the, the one of the other factors that so impresses me about Nina Simone, your film, um the whenever you see musical biopics for instance one major shortcoming of most of them is that you don't really get a sense of where their art comes from mm-hmm. and I, I watching your film i i really got a sense of who she was i mean a, a, on a deep level and mm. her art was sim- was an extension of that I, I mean that had to have been an important point for you to get across Sure, and I think also one of the things is, you know, you really want to hear the music. I mean, I think Nina poured so much of herself in the music, which is why, you know, that's such a strong feeling. You know, every cover, you know, of a song that she did, she made it totally her own. And um, you felt so much of herself and her own um, emotional journey, her pain, her joy, her anger um, in in those songs. Um, So certainly allowing them to kind of play out is a way of understanding Nina more deeply. Um, You know, we came to understand the film at a certain point in the editing room as a musical um, in that, um, you know, every song had a narrative function. Um, Every song could help advance the story and help us understand Nina more deeply. They weren't just examples. Oh, here's Exhibit A of art. Um, so I think that that was, you know, a big part of it. Did the did that music kind of guide the choices that you made in the editing room? Uh, yes. I mean, I, sometimes we chose music because of its narrative uh, meaning, you know, like Don't Smoke in Bed is a film about, you know, when, when she leaves her husband. Um, and sometimes we chose film because of songs because, of course, they, they marked a certain uh, chronological pr- progression or change turning point in her career, like a Mississippi Goddamn. Um, mm-hmm. But oftentimes, you know, we use songs for storytelling pur- purposes. You know, we, we use the song I Love You Porgy when she meets her first husband. You know, no, it's not actually her first husband, but her the main major love of her life, her, her uh, husband, Andy Stroud. So, yes, certainly the songs were meant to uh, both advance the story and, uh, and you know, allow you to experience the artistic nature, um, her, the experimentation, the infusion of classical, um, her classical training in these pieces, and, of course, the extraordinary uh, range of her voice.